as you know, every week, Steve Caboose and myself, Camille, we break down all the latest that's going on in the gaming world. And we also like to invite a friend over to join the discussion. This week, we have Marcel D. You're like, Hello, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Um, a beloved streamer as well as the lead on everything Twitch Meetup in Toronto. So thank you for joining us this week. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm glad I took the wrong door and I found myself here. So this is perfect. It works, <laughs> it works out. It works out. You know, I'll, I'll yes. look for the bathroom. Eventually, I'll find it. You know, so. <laughs> Eventually, you can sit down for an hour and yeah, a half. Yeah, sit down for an hour and a half. It's okay. I don't know if that's good or helpful for you, but we'll yeah. figure it out. Uh, yeah. For those of you at home, remember you could join the discussion because we have a lot to discuss this week. We're or this episode, we're going to be talking about Hitman uh, gameplay impressions in trilogy reflections. Steve's going to be giving us a lowdown on that i challenged him to that last week so i'm glad they're holding up your promise yeah yep. we have a more warner brother games uh info focused approach on games as a service model and caboose is going to be giving us all the ins on that also cd project red is embracing um the mod community so i want to hear more about that marcel and of course, there was lots of Tomb Raider information that came out. I, I'll be giving you the lowdown on that, as well as um, some corrections from Konami. So if you want to know, or for us to know your thoughts on the discussion, let us know on our Twitter at Squad State, or just uh, right here in the chat, or clip stuff, and then we could react to it on socials. Let's start off with Hitman, uh, because Hitman 3 came out. I had the pleasure of seeing some behind the scenes stuff for Hitman 2. So mm. Hitman 3, I, I feel like I was interested, but it kind of fell off my radar. So Steve, what's going on with Hitman 3? What's, what's happening with Hitman 47? What's going on with Hitman 3 and Agent 47? Well, nothing. It, it's all good stuff. Let me just okay. tell you right off the bat. <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't come as a big surprise. I mean, I've been talking about this game for a couple of weeks now. Uh, IO's, you know, coincidentally been popping up on the show for quite a bit now. Um, and I've been really excited for this game to come out. And luckily, you know, I've been able to to play for, you know, it's coming up on two weeks now. So I put a lot of time into it. And I'm really impressed with this game. Just period. Um, you know, going into it, obviously, I was really excited. I kind of ob obviously knew what to expect with the game. It kind of mm -hmm. follows a similar model every single time. You're, you're going out, you're completing contracts. It's open ended in a way that you can kind of experiment with the gameplay and stuff like that. But the way that IO approached this game and kind of it, it feels like a culmination of almost 20 years of experience for a studio. And that's something you don't really see all that often is a studio focus in on one franchise for two decades to get to a point where it all just feels like they've they've reached the pinnacle of their their style. Like yeah. Their, their gameplay method, their their level design, all this stuff. So, I mean, Hitman 3, following a similar suit as Hitman 1 and Hitman 2, part of the uh, World of Assassination trilogy, uh, it gives us six new levels. There's one that's in Dubai, so you're in, like, one of the tallest buildings in Dubai, uh, going inside and out, which is really great. And, like, just the environment is, is something stunning. Uh, there's another one that's kind of like, if you've if anyone's ever seen John Wick, uh, the club scene in the oh, original. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's one, there's one that's exactly that, and oh man, it, it's awesome. There's another one that's directly inspired by some of the Knives Out. If anyone's okay. seen that, okay, spot on. Um, so so they do and, take. And is that is that purposeful? Like they're I definitely know, referencing. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. Oh, Are there 100%. Any, do you know if there's any like Easter eggs, nods in those levels to those movies? John Wick, not so much. It's kind of like the environment itself. Like you can see that they wanted to go for something John Wick right. style. You're going in as an assassin. There, it's like a big rave going on around you. The Knives Out one, 100, because one of the uh, like in story missions that are in that level is essentially the plot of Knives Out. Oh. Like, you can't even just get around it. Like it, that is it, awesome. Really, it's it's Knives Out to a T where you're dealing. That with, is like, awesome. And I love that. The family. I love that too because I feel like you know sometimes when you have these studios that have these long-standing IPs um, that yeah. they've been working on nonstop, they kind of don't necessarily get stale. You you jump into another adventure and you know exactly what you're going to expect and you get it and and that's good enough. 
But I love when studios are able to say, yes, we are still giving you all that, but we're also giving nods to the other mediums or um, yeah. films, movies, games out there that are within our genre that helps us work on you know, the next installment because they, as a team, continue to be um, inspired by everything else around them, right? So I like that when uh, you boot up a game, you're able to experience that as well. Oh, exactly. And it, that keeps it from feeling so fresh and new. Um, and, and it really just elevates the game as a whole. Um, I, I think overall, uh, having put probably 40 hours into the game, I think this is the best the franchise has been since probably Hitman Blood Money back in like oh, the Xbox 360. Wow. That's I, like high standards right there. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, and I feel that way throughout the, the whole experience. I mean, yes... If you're just looking for like a single playthrough of the game, you're probably looking at six to eight hours, okay. something like that. Like it's really short to just missions? go through. There's six. Six missions. And that's usually like the standard for a Hitman yeah. game. You yeah. have these short but, missions and it's how you go about it. You could extend the Yeah. Time. I was yeah. going to say one of the biggest things about the Hitman games is that like, yeah, you can have, it's six to eight hours if you just run through every mission and that's it. But yeah. there's that, there's almost unlimited replayability. Yes. in hitman games like you can approach every mission 10 different ways and i know that a lot of people who are really into it i imagine steve that you did a little bit of this where like you'd play one mission but you want to see how you can either do it more efficiently how you could do it differently like what other approaches you could take to it i suck at stealth games so it's not necessarily it's not this is not my wheelhouse right. but there's it's so much fun to watch people who know what they're doing play a hitman yeah. games because it's it's a really cool genre i think are you one of those people caboose because i am where you know if i'm playing something like assassin's creed i'm sitting in that bush till like they do three row you know the npcs do three sure. rotations just to figure out <laughs> no, the pattern and then i'm I one of those it. people where i think that i'm not being seen as i now get out of this bush to kill a guy and there's like there's a whole crowd watching me like what are you doing? What are you doing? You all saw you get in that bush over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, right. that's me with South Games. <laughs> Where the NPCs literally look at you and they're just like standing. You know, like when yeah. they, they come to be yeah. like, whoa, whoa. And they're all scared because like you're rolling around and tumbling and then they just stand and look at you. That's Maybe it's why I love Ghost of Tsushima so much because it's very <laughs> stealth gamer friendly. Like they yeah, do sure. not do, like it's not crazy. They're not people like, seeing you immediately you can have like different stats to make it harder to be spotted and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it's very friendly to someone like me who's terrible at stealth games but the hitman games i don't stand a chance <laughs> how about you <laughs> I don't stand a do, chance. do you uh do you vibe with hitman games or stealth um i haven't really tried out too many of the hitman games um i feel like this is one is kind of like a silent victory because i know they also made like their money back with this one yeah um, that was yeah. Stealth today reported um, and I've seen like a lot of my friends been playing it a lot and like they were going back in like, I'm going to go try this. I'm like, isn't this like a short game? Like, and then mm -hmm. we're on like, the, this is like their second week playing the game already. Um, mm -hmm. So something is working very well with this game. Um, I do like to play a lot of stealth games. But I do play Assassin's Creed. Um, <laughs> there are times where I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to run in there and just beat them up. <laughs> like, I don't have time for this, you know, like, just stuff, like and, and that's why I liked about the Assassin's Creed games, because you can play anywhere you want. You just go in like brute force. Yeah. And you're a sneaky about it. Um, yeah. And like it seems like this is working as well with uh, with the Hitman series, where you could, you could go be all stealthy, or you could go all John Wick on them if you wanted to. So exactly. And, and how do they handle that balance, Steve? So the one thing I, I I do want to say is that they do make it very approachable to people who come in. And they're like, well, I don't want to sit like Caboose. I don't want to sit in a bush and just you know buy my time until someone's not looking and then try to go for something. Mm. The one thing I really appreciate about these new Hitman games is that they have something called mission stories, which is basically like small in mission, essentially like plot points. And they will kind of like guide you through the mission to be like, okay, so go here, take this person out. It's really easy. And then go here, pick up the screwdriver, do this, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to complete your contract. And it kind of gives you that, um, that foundation for approaching a level where you're like, okay, I understand it now. I understand where I can go, what I can do uh, within these parameters. Now I can experiment. Um, mm -hmm. But more so to your point, like how do they uh, balance between like stealth and just going in guns blazing? Yeah. It, it all comes down to like game design and level design where they'll have items littered around the level to be like, okay, well you can pick up again, a, a kitchen knife, take out the, the chef, 
be a chef for a bit. And then in another room, they'll have a gun or something. <laughs> and it all works so well where they have all the items in a place where, yeah, sure, you feel you feel like you can achieve your goal, but you don't feel overpowered at all. Like you mm-hmm. have to stick within like the in-game rules, uh, in quotes. But at the same time, you can experiment. And yeah, if things pop off and you're like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to take out this person with a rifle and just run out. You can yeah. do it. You're just going to have a lower sco- score at the end of the day, which only affects leaderboards if you're into it. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, you can approach it any way you want. Um, it's just whether or not you're down for those high levels. I guess. And how, and yeah. how is the story with this? Because you said you you get hired for like six like six different contracts. Is there like yeah. a story behind these contracts? Are are they all like yeah? And so this is like the culmination of the trilogy. So this has been something that I has been working on since um, twenty sixteen with the reboot. And the one thing I will say is that the story is really great in this. The only issue is that you don't have enough time to spend with these characters. Unfortunately, <laughs> like, this is the game that you have the most interaction with agent 47 where he's not just kind of like a a vessel for the player to go out and kill targets this is the one where they try to like humanize him the most and give him like oh okay character. yeah the only <laughs> thing is that you don't linger on those moments where you're like oh, that's a really great twist oh now we're just on the next mission oh okay mm. so did you like that because one of my one of the things that i liked about agent 47 he just seemed like this is business this is how things right. go and you know based yeah, on how mystique. Yeah. Hitman 2 kind of rolled out and how they did the reboot. You know that there's an established story there into his mm-hmm. origins and all that stuff. Um, but do you like that they kind of showed that more human side to him? Or do you prefer it that it was just like, you know, Agent 47, this is what he does? At first I did. Uh, I mean, you can even go back before the the reboot and look at Agent 47 as just a Hitman and mm-hmm. nothing more. Like, he's just a bald well, bald white dude just with a you know, like, <laughs> Whatever. (laughs) Exactly. Like, but at the end of the day, like that gets old. Hitman, bald white dude. Bald white white dude. Yeah. Three. (laughs) (laughs) And and that just gets old after a while. So I do appreciate that they try to give him a character and give him like actual emotions and show that he cares about things. Um, Again, I just wish that we could have sat on some some of those plot beats a little Mm -hmm. longer to make it that much more impactful. Because again, like. We talked about it on the show before, but like I was not really going back to Hitman for a while because they're going to James Bond now, which I think yeah. after Hitman three, it, they're in a good spot. But that being said, like the way the game ended, I was like, okay, well, I don't know if I feel that satisfied leaving leaving the franchise franchise off like this. I would have liked a little bit more. Okay, so do you get that closure in terms of the story? I know, like obviously, we don't want to yeah. give anything away, right. but do you feel that closure? Like just to clarify that closure and story, but not necessarily that um, satisfaction in like knowing those characters. Is that one hundred percent exactly? Okay. I feel like we got the we got the closure for that character. We just didn't get there in a very satisfying way because it was just rapid pace. It was here's here's a plot point. We're on to the next mission. Here's a plot point. Mm-hmm. We're on the next mission. Okay. Boom! Here's the conclusion of the story. Credits mm-hmm. roll. I was like, oh, I wish we just had those like a little longer to spend with those characters mm-hmm. just to make it all Fair. more impactful. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know what, that may actually work for some people who kind of look back to before the reboot when Agent 47 was just an agent, like he was just a hitman, right? And yeah. you do those missions and what made that franchise gold like before the re- reboot is the fact that you could do anything and, and they kept that throughout the reboot, but also the fact you could dress in everything and oh, anything. Exactly. Last a uh, Hitman, Hitman 2, you had the flamingo suit. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your favorite <laughs> suit in Hitman 3? Wow. Wow. That, you're putting me on the spot there. I, I kind of have to go through it all. Um, you know what? I don't think that there is a standout like the Flamingo one. Okay. The, Fling- oh, the no. Flamingo was a meme at that point. Like when that game came out, everyone's like, okay, we got to find the Flamingo, dress him up. That's silly. I don't know if there is one in this game, to be honest. To be 100% honest, I don't think that there's like a standout. Oh, here's Agent 47 in a funny costume kind of thing. Ah, that that's kind of disappointing, there. but yeah. like, ah, Unless like maybe they just, you know, yeah, yeah. maybe it's hiding somewhere or maybe yeah. they just kind of top the flamingo because like that was, it was gold. Yeah. That was <laughs> the gold. other thing I want to say uh, about this game, and I don't see a lot of people talking about that, which is surprising because given the like the Twitch audience, the community uh, and 
content creation uh, audience out there, this game is great for that. For if if you're setting up a stream, this game has essentially like a Mario Maker mm. mode in it where you can set up your own contracts and then share them with your friends or just give them out. Oh, to like oh wow. Content creators. I did not even know about that. <laughs> or you can put like specific NPCs and just say, okay, kill this guy with fiber wire, kill this guy with by pushing him off a ledge or something. And that is so cool. That's the, really cool. You the player then has to go out and challenge that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, given that like how big what? Mario Maker's come out, I'm surprised more people aren't talking about it. This. Yeah. Like I feel yeah. like they didn't even right. market Steve, Steve you, you got to be honest here. Are you a PR for them? Because you're selling this game. To me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I might have to, like, no, but uh, you know, I'm looking at your down name there. Call. I don't see PR. Like, what's going on? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess IO was just banking on the fact that it's like a Hitman franchise, right? right. Hitman has okay. that legacy brand um mm. everyone knows what it was maybe if they marketed it, it with the you know maker aspect it might have pushed some people away i maybe. find like with mario maker is some of those levels are so elaborate when i look to mario maker i i know i can't even create anything that's a quarter of a, amount to some of the stuff that you could find on there so it's intimidating to me so maybe if i did know that there was a you know maker mode mm. i i would have been like ah, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. It did always it, it, feel like a background kind of thing because it has okay. been in there uh, in previous games. I just feel like this is the first game that I was like, oh, well, that's really cool because of how big Mario Maker and stuff like that, like those community games are now. So is it more fleshed out? Do you think that they put more uh, mechanics into the Maker aspect in Hitman 3? No, no it's I, I, I think it's just the same. I think that now that like the maps are bigger, the maps are more expansive, it leaves... a. Uh, a, a creators a lot more room to, to kind of play around with mm -hmm. yeah. so now playing because we've discussed you know this 007 game that io yeah. is going to be working on um and we have no news on it or what approach they'll go um about with this game which 007 we'll see if it'll, if it'll be a completely different 007 after playing hitman 3 can you more see a 007 game with IO Interactive? I know we we kind of came to the consensus uh, before right. Marcel, just to fill you in, that like that makes sense. IO Interactive and 007, that makes sense. Yeah. But now that you've played Hitman 3, do you see maybe them testing out certain mechanics that weren't there in previous Hitmans that may be there in a 007 game? I think it's all, a lot of it is going to come down to its level design. Mm -hmm. I think they're really experimenting with these expansive intricate levels where i would say like they go neck and neck with something like from software where everything in that level serves a purpose and every every path you can take intertwines with another one where it just mm. all makes sense there's no wasted space give, you know and it's so large i think that's really what they're testing here is to make the biggest open worlds that are still self-contained if, if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah interesting yeah, sweet. Because, that's sweet yeah like i'm just thinking now 007 i'm thinking okay daniel craig because that's our 007 right now right. if we go to something like the casino in coast casino royale a level you're building out that level you would want everything to have that interactivity you could you know it has its purpose in that right. level so i think it's smart that they're testing out there and obviously we're going to see hitman mechanics within whatever 007 game that they do create yeah uh, but but it's interesting that you say like that's the aspect because now I'm just gonna put on my tinfoil hat and keep theorizing on where they're gonna go with this 007 game. Now that we know it's all about environments, I'm gonna go back to the movies, think of which 007 visited the most environments. I'll come back to you guys with that theory in a later week. And right. <laughs> But next week, you. next next episode. <laughs> next episode, more 007 theories. Uh, thank <laughs> you for that one. Probably. I'm really happy that we got your impression of it, just because I'm not too sure if I'm going to give up some time with COD to hop into Hitman, but I'm actually pretty excited with some of the stuff that you've mentioned, so maybe I will. Yeah, yeah. give it a shot, because uh, I think this is the best chance to jump into Hitman and, and kind of see their yeah. full vision of what that series could be. All right. And then and then again to confirm, you can get all three, like as like a package or, or in Hitman 3, you have Hitman 1 and 2's levels. So if well. you if you purchased Hitman 2 and then purchase like the legacy pack within Hitman 2, all mm -hmm. the progress comes along with it, as well as like all oh. the gameplay improvements that they've done for Hitman 3. Okay. Um, and then I know that the, at least for Xbox, they're working on ray tracing. 
I'll be honest, this game doesn't even need ray tracing. It already looks stunning. Yeah, it's okay. beautiful. But I've seen. Bring it oh, on. Welcome edition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they could bring more next gen trigger words into a game, I mean, I'm sold. Exactly. I'm sold. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want them to do with uh, Hitman, do like a whole take and spill. Like, if they want to do like a whole Hitman, like, he has oh, a family. Liam, His daughter Liam was taken out. Like, <laughs> taken yes. four in Hitman. Like, what? Oh, get, I'm down. I am down for that. <laughs> oh, Old man's God. revenge, you know? That's something like that. <laughs> oh, Liam. Yeah, we'll we would have, you know. yeah. We would have to agree that Liam yeah. would have to do everything, like the uh, the voice yeah. acting, mocap, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, facial scans. We need to see him, you know, really exactly. put work into that one.